Welcome to Veterans Connected, where maintenance and reliability expert and military veteran Eric Bevavino connects with fellow veterans in industry during each episode, where they exchange their experiences and discuss the transition from the military to industry and the paths and resources that led them to where they are today. The Veterans Connected podcast is proudly produced by the industry's leading network and learning community, Mobius Connect. Eric, over to you. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Bevino, host of the Mobius Connect podcast, focused on connecting military veterans to the maintenance and reliability community. Our aim here is to bridge the understanding gap between the military and civilian worlds, thereby improving the veteran transition journey and ultimately providing hope and a helping hand to any of our brothers and sisters out there struggling to find their way. We'll do this by interviewing veterans and maintenance and reliability professionals that are helping through this journey. For this session, we've chosen to interview a leader from the maintenance and reliability community, Mr. Chris Pepin, whose company knows the value of veterans and who serves as a board member of Operation New Uniform. I'm really looking forward to this conversation and learning more about Chris, his company, and his work with vets. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Hey, great. Thanks for having me on, Eric. Yeah, you bet, man. You bet. Why don't we start off by... uh, Letting us know a little bit more about you, what you do, what your company's all about, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. I am the founder of Progressive Reliability, or ProRely for short, and our company focuses exclusively on hiring within maintenance and reliability. So uh, the maintenance and reliability disciplines within manufacturing talent, um, and that's either contract workforce, or we've actually got a lot of high-level um, management executives that we do hiring for as well. Oh, very interesting. So my my stint in maintenance and reliability consulting, I worked with a company called Management Resources Group, and this goes back about 12 years before I got back into lubricants with Valvoline. But uh, we had consultants, we had project managers, we had field engineers that were were walking down equipment and stuff like that. Is that the the type of, of people you're working with or that, that you recruit and train and have part of, of your program? We can. There's a lot of really great independent consulting organizations out there. There's a lot of great small teams. That, that segment is actually, frankly, really well covered. So there's just there's ah, a I got you. doing a lot in the consulting space. So we're around a project or something of that nature. We've actually got some partners that we, we come across that business and we refer it to the very best. Uh, that we know, because for us, it's more a matter of managing the talent shortage and the talent gaps that go on. So, you know, as we mentioned, everybody knows the direct hire model. It's, you know, the uglier word is headhunting. Um, you know, that's that's kind of one way of looking at what we do. We kind of have more of a farming than a headhunting approach. We know where all the great folks are and what they're looking for, for the right opportunity. And when it comes along, uh, we want to introduce people to where they need to go next for their career. Um, as opposed to going around and poaching and pinching and all those other things, which really don't add a lot of value over the, the grand scheme of things. And then the other point when we do mention contract is so imagine somebody who, um, well, the big talent migration is an issue. So mm-hmm. people talk about, hey, folks are leaving their, you know, exiting the market, the silver wave. It's got a million different names for it. Um, but ultimately, so there's some great people out there that have a ton of knowledge that no longer fit the constraints of the 50, 60 hour work week for one site. We've got guys that we work with who will go on and work a project for us for three months where they need a CMRP certified reliability engineer, but they don't have, you know, our client won't have room for the extra headcount or really what we're doing a lot of work on is maintenance debt. So, hey, we need six, eight really great troubleshooters, uh, craftspeople for the next six months to get caught up on this project or, hey, we want somebody who's really great with lubrication because we don't have it in-house. We have somebody, but we want to get them stood up. So can you bring us somebody for six months to work hand in hand to get this project completed and to make sure the knowledge transfer goes on into the organization? So it's really different than the typical codependency consulting cycle of let's get in and then we'll tell you more consulting, but then your people don't learn anything because they don't like, you know, and that sort of thing. It, that doesn't really uh, match our philosophy of leaving our clients better than we found them. So that's where we kind of take more of a staff augmentation approach. How can we add some people in? And frankly, 
Uh, there's other instances where we, uh, you know, we have it in our contract where if our clients are really, really happy with the person they're working with, they're allowed to hire them away from us. So we don't have contractors as such where, hey, you know, if it's better for you to work directly, you love this company, that's okay too. So it's not, it's it's kind of an interesting place where we're not talking about temps per se, like we don't do the temp work because that's really uh, very entry level stuff. It's, it's, it's this middle ground that isn't really being well served that we try to cover. Interesting. And and when you say temp work, I think of, you know, general administrative stuff that's right. perhaps less specialized, though, you know, maybe I'm unfamiliar with, with some aspects of it. You're really talking about folks that understand the core principles of maintenance and reliability come in. They don't need to be taught, exactly. you know, and I see a little bit better now as how veterans can fit into this, because if you, if you've listened to some of the Prior podcasts, I mean, the, the recurring themes are the training they get in the military, whether it's the Army, the Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. There's a foundation of, of maintenance and reliability that goes into everything because the gear is generally pretty critical, to either keeping right. people alive or saving somebody or, or winning a battle here and there. So now I see the connection. So really, you're, it sounds like you're you're a more specialized type of I won't use the dirty word. I like how you said the dirty right. word of, of headhunting, but uh, right. recruiting and placement Correct. for talented individuals. And you mentioned CMRP, of course, which I'm, I'm familiar with, but uh, perhaps not all the listeners on the podcast would be familiar with. Can you describe uh, CMRP a little bit and, and the certifications that you, you look for and uh, folks that you're bringing on as techs or even reliability engineers, you know, that type of stuff? Well, within the reliability engineer, engineering world, there's a nonprofit known as SMRP, the Society of Maintenance and Reliability Professionals. And they have a CMRP as well as a CMRT certification. Um, so that's kind of one of the comments. So we're a industry partner with SMRP and our, our head of sales is actually uh, CMRP certified. So we have, you know, it's, it's just shows a lot of specialized knowledge. It's not an easy test you can take. You have to have several years of experience. Uh, and that is just, you know, that just speaks kind of towards the niche specialization. Everything we do comes under that umbrella though of reliability, even when it comes into providing maintenance personnel. So for instance, today I, I actually had two different clients who are both looking for maintenance managers. You know, it's not a directly a reliability engineer, but the head of reliability at one client wanted to bring on a new maintenance manager because he's got to cover that desk until they get the right person in. So that's the type of work that we run into on a daily basis. And then of course, uh, there will be a site that, hey, we need six, seven people to get this stood up until we can get the right uh, right fit. And that's where we've gone to that contract model for fulfilling the, the really, really tough to do uh, hourly roles. And the reason is we have more control of our people and in, in ensuring quality and ensuring we have everything we need um, because of the way that that works. So I won't bore your audience with any more complication on the niche. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, needless to say, when it comes to finding really great manufacturing talent, um, you can give us a call and we'll, we'll find a way to diagnose. And if we can't serve it, we are happy to refer you to a partner who can. Fantastic. And I think uh, is it smrp.org? It, it, uh, the website for folks who are interested in it. Okay. Very yes, good. Yes, Very sir. good. And Chris, you, you certainly have a company with a website there too, the progressive I, reliability. Yeah. Or, yeah. You can or, go to progressive reliability.com or if you don't feel like typing that many letters, you can do P R O R E L I.com, um, which is also our email address. I found at progressive reliability.com to be a lot to ask for people when they're shooting us emails. So went ahead and found a shorter name. <laughs> Believe me, I understand. R.E. Bevavino at Valvoline.com doesn't necessarily, <laughs> if you type it a thousand times a day, yeah, it, it becomes easy, but not. Uh, <laughs> a lot of vowels, too. You know, you yeah, to a lot of E's that. and V's yeah. and you know how it goes, but uh, that's part of my heritage, but that's okay. So how did you get to this place, Chris? I mean, what's your what's your background? I mean, what what brought you to what you're doing today? So oddly enough, you mentioned the, the word entrepreneur, and that's what I did my undergraduate studies in at uh, Florida State of all places. Uh, so it was a very highly social uh, education. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, that, that was really what I Networking, thought. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. network specialist uh, there for, uh, you know, 
four-year degree that I did in five. Uh, but uh, from there, I went into an apprenticeship in sales. Um, so it wasn't necessarily about, you know, hey, you know, hobnob and rubbing elbows. There's some real, real technical aspects to uh, the underpinnings of my education there. And it wasn't that I wanted to be necessarily a salesperson my whole life, but I always wanted to build a business. And there's really two routes, sales or finance. I wanted to start off in sales and then have been able to acquire the financial skills over time. Um, my very first, I, I kind of fell into a, my first recruitment company and we were at the right time, right place, right people. And it just happened to be my first. And we wound up being uh, the third fastest growing company in the country. There's a uh, Inc. Magazine rates the 5,000 fastest. Sure, and yeah. we wound up ranking number three. This would have been eight, nine years ago at this point. So we grew really fast, um, really got to learn uh, a lot about finding the right type of contract specialists and how to expand that business, how to run it really well. A lot of what not to do as well. So if you ever hear of a really fast growing business, it's, uh, it sounds great on paper, uh, but there's a, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot that uh, is sacrificed in doing that. So I didn't really want to do that kind of speed um, because of quality issues. So I wound up searching for, okay, what's the right market that's really consistent um, but unlike the tech world, people really have a high degree of respect for one another. Uh, people really have a lot of understanding. There's a lot of camaraderie and the manufacturing, uh, and asset, asset maintenance world had it had everything I was looking for. And, you know, my, my grandfather was actually, uh, worked in a paper mill. He was the head of his union. My godfather was a chemical engineer and, uh, my mom and dad were real estate agents. So this was pretty much the only way to blend it all together. <laughs> so it's the it perfect was, blend. Was really yeah. Kind of yeah. <laughs> uh, so that worked out well. So when I came into it, it really, uh, it struck, we had a, a very successful first year in 2019. And we, you know, through dogged determination, made it through the subsequent two years of up and down. And now we've really got something in terms of finding, you know, for us, it's the right, the word is product market fit. So what we're doing and what we're providing isn't being done in the way with the quality that we see fit. So that's a really big opportunity. The people we work with, we really like, we have a high degree of respect for one another. And it's a really great niche where we have an opportunity to become, um, you know, one of the more formidable players in our sub niche within our sub niche, so to speak. So um, in doing that and things picking up, going back to the college social model, one of the first things I always want to do is find a way to give back too. So a lot of people tend to just set out and what, you know, what's in it for me kind of mindset. We always like to look at, okay, how can we help the people we're serving? How, again, going back to that philosophy of how can we leave be people better than we found them? Uh, and so I got introduced by a very good friend to Operation New Uniform, which is, I think, what, what we really want to talk about here today, which is a fantastic organization. I've been on the board for two years now. Um, and their sole purpose is to help veterans who are transitioning out of their military careers into the civilian world, um, learn those interview skills, understand, you know, the, the real difference about what goes on out here in the hiring world, um, what kind of opportunities are available. You know, if I mean, we were at a class the other day, if, if somebody had at, if you were to ask a, a civilian on the street, what an E9's responsibilities were, most people would have, you know, no idea. And, and the other real challenging part is everything that our veterans have done and accomplished is extraordinarily difficult to translate or explain in an interview scenario because it's a totally different language. Um, yeah. But yeah, it couldn't be more different of a language. So it's an intensive two-week course and 98% of the veter veterans, you know, find that it, it really does bridge the gap and helps them along. I think those that we work with, 65% have been unemployed for up to six months and 20% were unemployed for a year or more. And we've got a really, we got 97% success in gaining employment within four months of completing the course. So there's a lot of philosophies in that in terms of learning a 30 second commercial or an elevator pitch, learning how to interview. I actually go in and uh, teach a portion of a class on how the, the whole hiring game works in terms of the companies, what they're looking for, 
you know, whatever, you know, it's not, not, it has nothing to do with really our company necessarily, but it's sharing all those secrets on why my job applications aren't going anywhere, why this process is so difficult and really how to, how to network, how to utilize the tools that are out there, LinkedIn, how to utilize, you know, the different VSO organizations that are available. And we got a lot of them here in Jacksonville and, and really how to, or most importantly, build their confidence in having these conversations um, and, and building some of this confidence because coming out of the military, uh, is, and then, you know, expecting, Hey, you know, you're, you're a leader. This is great. You're going to do awesome. You know, they, you got a two day class and then, yeah, go get them. All of a sudden, <laughs> right. yeah, week six, week eight, week 10 comes along. It's, it's really, really difficult. So that's what we aim to uh, aim to help. We have, a uh, have grown tremendously the last few years, actually, the, the state of Florida's uh, made a significant investment in in the work that we're doing at ONU as well. So we have um, a lot of a lot of resources that grow year over year, and we're we're very very excited about the work that we're doing. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So you mentioned a two weeks intensive course. Is that free for veterans then, uh, or is it for pay, or do you have to Completely apply? Free. Okay, you have to apply. Um, and we're working on more online coursework as well, but uh, it, you have to apply. Generally, 70, 80% of students attend live in person here in Jacksonville. We've also got a class we're doing several times a year in Tampa. However, we also have uh, people coming in remotely via video. Um, we had a graduation just this last week and somebody wasn't able to attend because he had a job interview. Uh, which we encourage, you know, <laughs> that's so, a great uh, excuse. Yeah. yeah. So, so we are, uh, but it is a great network. And the other most important piece is you've got a community of people who are going through the same thing. You have the other classes that you can, that you can, that are present at the graduation, other people who can kind of help you through this journey and talk through it. And we really, what we're doing, frankly, just within our own companies, we're trying to find what are the right organizations to take uh, to, to start the right people with. So, and this is specific to reliability, of course, and those military disciplines will just say, you know, we're fans of Navy nukes, uh, if you understand the, the type, uh, you know, in that line of work. Um, so we're, we're looking for the right organizations too. So if anybody out there is an organization that really has a great program for starting out veterans and, and having that training and mentoring and guidance, because that's important too. And that's one thing we talk about is finding mentors within the working world. Um, to help you along and, and finding the right organization rather than just finding a job. What is the right organization? What's the right group, the right team that you're joining as opposed to, you know, I just want to get secured and, and get this, you know, kind of get the first in. It's really, you know, what's the path you want to go on? Because there's so much more to work than just the title and the paycheck. Without a doubt. And if you default to survivorship or survivability is probably a better word, right? All I right. need is get a job, get a paycheck, and then I'll figure it out. That's well, all you yeah. yeah, that's all you get. And two years down the road, you're doing the same thing going, man, this job sucks. <laughs> I should be doing something else. I should be making more money in, in two years after it's uh, it's a change, right? After you've been in it for a while, swimming around and, and figuring things out. So that sounds fantastic. So you got Jax, you got Tampa. Just out of curiosity, I haven't been to Jacksonville in a while. Is the Naval Station in Jacksonville still up and running or is it uh, has it been closed which, since then? Which one? Because okay. we, we have right. two. We have NAS Jax and we have uh, Mayport Naval Station as well. So okay. So the airfield. Water. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Quite... Vibrant. Still, oh, yes. still good. It's oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. 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 So you're right in the heart of the Navy, Navy town there. And, uh, and that's good. We haven't had, we've had some, some Navy folks on here. And I think the, the theme, like you said, well, we'd like Navy nukes. It's just a matter of getting somebody out there. You might say, get somebody say like, we like army NCOs because they're so, or Marines because they're, you know, focused on the mission and all that type of stuff. But yeah. Okay. And, and yeah. that's to say, when I say we, this is, this is my company within reliability operation, new uniform serves every branch uh, of the armed services. And we've actually started doing classes for military spouses because there is so much weight that goes on the spouses in terms of finding remote work, the kind, the right kind of work for that kind of lifestyle, um, we want to help the whole family. So yeah, there's there's a spouse support program that we've started, and I believe we've graduated our first class as well. 
Fantastic. We spoke about long emails and web addresses a little bit uh, ago here on, in the earlier part, but OperationNewUniform.org or is it ONF oh, or what? It's o O N U Vets.org. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. O N U Vets.org. Fantastic. We can include that in the show notes as well. Are there any plans to expand to other areas of the country or, or is it uh, sort of like what's the, the skinny on, on growth for Operation New Uniform? Well, so we're a very transparent organization. Um, we are a very financially disciplined organization. So we found keeping them and uh, keeping our on-site classes at home saves a tremendous amount of expense so we can mm-hmm. impact more veterans. So we're moving to what we can do more online uh, and how we're able to serve serve those online classes and kind of start creating the curriculums to share. I mean, ultimately, the goal of any organization like this is to serve as many people as possible in an impactful way. Yeah, without a doubt, you get a larger opportunity for people to join from their house or wherever they happen to be on vacation or whatever, as well as instructors, professors, teachers uh, coming in remotely get to much broader segment of the population. I think that's a great idea. So if folks want to get in contact with Operation New Uniform or yourself, what's the best way to go about that? So onuvets.org is a great way to get uh, do learn about the organization. And again, you'll also see the research in terms of you can find our reports and find out, again, the ethics of the organization is something that's really important to myself and, and I think to anybody uh, being involved in this, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, really, that's kind okay. of fast. Uh, that's a great way to get uh, get routed to the right folks. So I, I know my name is here, Chris Pepin. Look me up at at ProRely, and uh, and I'm happy to route anybody in the right direction if it should help as well. Well, fantastic. I think a conversation with you or somebody on your staff is a great place to start. Sounds like you could uh, lead people in the, along the right path, whether it's straight into a job that you already know about right. or getting them better equipped to succeed in an interview, understand what life is like beyond the transition phase and help people get into the right job. Sounds like you got a lot of good things going on, Chris. Yeah, we, we start working with people as early as three to six months before uh, before they're they're due. So uh, you know we're we're happy to do so, and uh, and just uh, from a company side, you know we also support another organization here in town called Canines for Warriors. So this okay. is just Jacksonville is a very um, veteran service organization rich uh, environment. So um, that's that's just to say we there's a lot of options here, and and there's a lot of help out there for those that are looking. Um, and we've also got another one called the Wounded Warrior Project. I'm sure everybody's heard of. So they're actually uh, my first staffing company uh, got their office gobbled up by Wounded Warrior. <laughs> uh, is that right? Yeah, yeah they, they bought us out of our lease. We had to move because uh, they are just, you know, they're a phenomenal group with uh, with quite a trajectory as well. We didn't mind. Uh, so we got a little more square footage. Uh, but maybe not as prestigious as them. They got they got a really good <laughs> spot. I'll tell you that. So uh, that's uh, yeah, that's kind of that's what we've gotten. And, and again, we're just happy to support this world in 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 whatever way we can and make sure we leave all of our neighbors better than we found them. I appreciate that. It's very um, heartening for me to talk to a guy like you to hear about things that are going on like this, whether it be Florida or anywhere else in the country. I mean, supporting our veterans, supporting each other in a kind way and, and trying to help people out. I think uh, the world needs more of that. And, and certainly the U.S. could do with more patriotic souls such as yourself. So yeah, I want to be yeah. respectful of your time. And um, I know we had a little bit of time carved out here, but is there anything we haven't talked about so far that you wanted to make sure to get memorialized on digital here for, for the folks listening? Well, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and send you our impact uh, infographic just with some stats and figures on kind of what things are, what we're doing. It, it just in terms of the the vast amount of impact of what we do at ONU and the, you know, the types of careers we offer and everything else. The other thing is I wanted to mention there's tax credits available for hiring veterans. And that's not something I facilitate. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, businesses that hire eligible veterans can are, are eligible for a tax credit of up to $9,600. So I think veterans with service connected disabilities of which 78% of the ONU vets have um, 
you know, maintain, uh, there's a existing work opportunity tax credit um, for those with service-connected disabilities hired with, within one year of being discharged. And so that credit's for 40% of the first 12,000 wages, which is up to 4,800. Long-term unemployed veterans with service-connected disabilities um, have a new credit of 40% of the first 24,000 of wages. So that's the up to 9,600. And I, I've got some of those details here um, from the Department of Labor website and the IRS. I'm not a tax professional and don't pretend to be one on, on podcasts. So uh, I'll definitely want to make sure that those organizations looking to hire veterans uh, and looking to get the best folks available. There are programs uh, that we're happy to make sure that you're, you've got the knowledge and you're empowered with within your own organization so that you can, you know, we can work together as a team. And, and frankly, look, none of us would be able to run the businesses we do if we didn't have the veterans behind us uh, ensuring the safety of these channels and ensuring the safety of uh, our economic presence within the world. So we are uh, extremely grateful and I'm just happy to have been able to share this today. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. And just uh, out of curiosity, on one of the other podcasts, we talked about the Skill Bridge program. Are, are you guys working at all within that or is that something that is sort of an, an adjacency to, to what you guys, are you familiar with Skill Bridge? I, I'm not. Uh, okay. Admittedly, yeah, I, I'm learning as I go day by day. So that's another program to add to my notepad here. Uh, <laughs> well, there are a lot of them. That's one of the challenges. There's so many, right? But Skillbridge is, uh, I, I believe it's Department of Labor and Department of Defense working together. You can get out and start actually working on a job as, you know, more or less a, a, an assistant or a temporary like trial employee for six months, even when you're still on active duty, okay. the, the government pays your salary to, to the, you know, the individual, the service member, and then the company that is working with you gets sort of free labor, so to speak, a check. And then in. there's a conversion. Yeah. Forgive me. I didn't know the name of it. We've actually got a board yeah. member who came along on that program. So we have, ah. uh, there, yeah, we have an o ONU graduate on our board. Uh, he's got a fabulous job at a very, very large bank, one of the three most prominent in the country. Uh, and he came along on a program like that. So we work, of course, um, you know, I haven't haven't come across being able to put somebody on that program yet, but that's definitely I know several of our veterans from the graduation this past weekend came through on that program. Fantastic. Well, we're we're all about connecting the dots, and certainly if we can, <clears throat> excuse me, if we can help in any way, we're happy to, and and we're very thankful to have you on the podcast as one of our guests. I really enjoyed the the short time that we had together and I'm really happy to learn more about yourself, your company and operations, new uniform. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate thanks. it. Thanks, Eric. And thanks everybody for listening. And also thanks to Mobius for pro providing this platform and help transitioning vets as well as those looking for to hire them in the field of maintenance and reliability. Very good day. Have a happy Halloween, everyone. October 31st, 2022. Thank you, Chris. We'll talk to you later. Be good. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Veterans Connected. We will see you back for another episode very soon. In between, we hope to see you in the Veterans Connected community group where you can meet Eric and fellow podcast guests and share with other industry veterans at MobiusConnect.com. And we hope to see you there.